guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna to be doing a video using the Naked Cherry Palette by Urban Decay. So I'm gonna be doing a tutorial with this and also like the Highlight Blush Palette. Um, I'm gonna be using a little bit of this lipstick, all kind of from the Naked Cherry line. A lot of you guys wanted me to do a tutorial with the Naked Cherry Palette, so that is what I'm doing today. But instead of doing a tutorial like I usually do with like the music and the voiceover, you know, all professional and stuff. A lot of you guys said that you want some more chit chat get ready with me, or not get ready with me, but chit chat tutorials. But a lot of you guys said you like chit chat tutorials because a lot of times you watch tutorials while you're getting ready, so you kind of like to listen to people talk while you're doing your makeup, you know, which makes sense because that's usually what I do too. So that is what I'm gonna be doing is like a chit chat tutorial and I asked you guys to ask me some questions on Instagram, so I'm gonna be going through some questions and doing a tutorial at the same time. So I'm using the Catrice HD Liquid Coverage Foundation and a little beauty blender, and I'm just going to apply this. I already did a moisturizer. How big is your makeup collection now? And that is by Krista L. Meow. My makeup collection is constantly growing and also shrinking. <laughs> like, I don't know if you guys remember, I did a video of cleaning out my makeup collection and just getting rid of a ton of makeup. That was like a few years ago. And to be honest, like, I don't really want my makeup collection to be humongous. Um, it just doesn't interest me. Um, I used to be all about, like, the collecting makeup life when I first started YouTube, but that doesn't really interest me anymore because I tend to use the same makeup every single day anyways. And um, it's nice to have a decent makeup collection for when I do, like, Halloween tutorials or if I'm doing, like, you know, freelance makeup and stuff like that. You know, there's reasons to have a decent sized makeup collection, but, like, I don't need a huge, huge, huge collection. And I don't really want one, to be honest. It just, the makeup doesn't get used. But I would say I try to only keep my makeup collection in one Alex drawer, which is hard. Um, but right now I have like a bunch of products that have been sent to me and they're kind of like stacked up next to my Alex drawers. Like I have a bunch of foundation lines and stuff like that. Um, I get a lot of lip products, a lot of palettes and stuff like that. Um, but I try to keep my makeup collection fairly small compared to some youtubers i think um but i always keep like my new products around to just in case because i like to use kind of new products when i can and talk about them when i can but i also try to give makeup products away a lot so if you guys want to be part of like makeup giveaways um i do them a lot on facebook in my facebook group i always link that down below um and usually they're gently used or swatched makeup because a lot of times i have to swatch makeup for like Instagram and stuff like that. So the makeup that I give away is swatched or lightly used and I make sure that I state that, but most people don't really care and they're aware of the fact that I have to kind of like test out the makeup that I get. Yeah, I would say it's about one Alex drawer and then like a little pile next to my Alex drawer. And yeah, it's a little bit overwhelming right now. I kind of need to get rid of some, but that's about how big it is right now. Do you guys know that um, CoverGirl is cruelty free now. I was thinking about doing like a makeup tutorial, just CoverGirl stuff, like doing a celebratory CoverGirl, like full face makeup tutorial to celebrate their cruelty free switch. Because it is not common that a big, big makeup brand like CoverGirl goes cruelty free. Like that's a big thing for them and I am just so happy. So let me know if you guys would wanna see that because I think that'd be really, really fun to do. What's that? What is your and Travis's most reoccurring fight or argument? And that is by Chuckling Tiger. That's a good question. Um, what is our biggest, most occurring fight? So this is the Sheer Envy Color Correct Cushion Wonder Concealer. This is the neutralizer shade by Hard Candy. Favorite thing ever. I'm not even kidding, so good. Jaclyn Hill actually just posted on Twitter. She goes, I'm going to the drugstore. Give me a recommendation for things to buy. And I told her to buy this. I doubt she saw my comment, but I was like, I hope she buys it so she can try it because it's so good. But anyways, um, biggest argument. To be honest, I feel like this changes. Like, I feel like, um, okay, I'm gonna try my best to stop saying like in this video. I'm gonna make a conscious effort to not say like very often. I mean, I'm gonna say it, just not very often. But I feel as though <laughs> this changes. I feel like when me and Travis were younger and we were first in a relationship and we were dating or first married or we first moved in together, we fought about different things than we do now. Like I feel like this changes a lot depending on where you are in your relationship. Um, like I remember fighting with Travis all the time when we were first dating and first living together. Um, he slept in so late. He still sleeps in late. Travis, this is just part of his personality. 
And I used to get so frustrated with him. I remember when we first moved in together and it just cracks me up because now I don't really care if he sleeps in, like it doesn't bother me at all. And I think it's like an age thing. Like it doesn't bother me like it used to. And I think that just happens with time. But that was our old argument all the time I remember. So by the way, I just used the NYX Mineral Matte Finishing Powder on my face. And then the Beached Bronzer in Bronzed. This is what I'm gonna use for my bronzer, my contour. And this is also by Urban Decay. Honestly, like when I think about this, I feel like a lot of the arguments that we have kind of stem from like my own head. <laughs> like Travis, and I feel like this is kind of something that is pretty common, I think. Maybe not always, well obviously not always. There's always exceptions to everything, but I feel like men just tend to be a little bit more like laid back, you know, domestically. Not always, obviously, but like I feel like that happens a lot. At least that, that's how it is in my relationship. Travis is much more laid back. Like not much bothers Travis, which is a great trait to have, but he just doesn't get bothered by a lot of stuff. So if I do something that annoys him, like it doesn't annoy him that bad. But with me, I think I'm a little bit more vocal about stuff. So I feel like when we do argue, a lot of times it's because of me being annoyed versus him, which is kind of funny, but I don't know. So I'm gonna be using the Naked Cherry Highlight and Blush Palette. And this has this beautiful blush. I love this blush color. It is such a perfect color. And I'm gonna mix the highlighters together. Anyways, so one huge difference that me and Travis have, he is less clean than I am, and I am very clean. Travis doesn't notice messes, but I'm highly triggered by messes. <laughs> and I get some anxiety when things are too messy or too cluttered. Whereas Travis just doesn't see messes and clutter. Like it doesn't affect him at all. And I wish I was more like him to be honest, but um, I feel like we tend to argue about that because I'm so affected sometimes by messes. Like it can just cause me to just like freak all of a sudden and I'm like, I need this cleaned up. Like this is driving me crazy. Like I can't live in this mess anymore. And then he's more like, oh my God, like calm down. Like you'll be fine. <laughs> but honestly, me and Travis don't fight too, too often. We're very um, chill people for the most part and very laid back. We don't let a lot of stuff stress us out a lot of times and we're just very, very good for each other. How did you pick the girls' names? Have I talked about this before? I don't know if I have. So I'm gonna use this Feels color right here. It is a little bit of the cooler toned blender color. So I'm gonna put that in my crease into like the blender area. What was I gonna say again? <laughs> oh, where did I, how did I pick my girls' names? Okay, I don't know if I've talked about this before, but it's actually kind of funny for Elena's name. So there was this guy that I literally had a crush on my entire freaking high school career but he had a sister named Elena and she actually um we danced together she was much older than me she was in like my brother's grade but I always remember loving her name and I always thought the name Elena was the most beautiful name of all time and so then when I got pregnant I was like talking to Travis about names and I was like so I knew this girl in high school who whose name was Elena and I'm like what if we use that name but maybe with like an A instead and he loved it. He thought it was the most beautiful name ever. We kind of threw around things like A-L-A-Y-N-A. -A we also threw around like A-L-A-I-N-A-H. So it'd be like Kara with an H on the end. So we threw around a couple versions, but we settled on A-L-A-I-N-A. -A -A. So yeah, it was the sister of my high school crush, but we knew the family for a very long time. My mom is like still really good friends with their mom, but I just always thought her name was really pretty and that is where I got that name from, which is funny. And then my, her middle name is Elena Charlotte. Charlotte is my grandma's first name. Her name is Charlotte Amelie, which is where Amelie comes from. Um, so Elena Charlotte is named after my grandma. Um, and then Emery, Elizabeth. Emery is actually really, really funny. So if you guys watch Karis, Christmas star, she almost named her son Emery for the same reasons I named Emery Emery. And I actually came up with this name when I was in beauty school and I remember exactly where I was when I thought of this name. I was sitting at the shampoo, no, it wasn't the shampoo bowls. It was in the hair dryers, the area with the hair dryers. And I was sitting there. So I'm gonna use Devilish right here and I'm gonna put that in my crease. I was sitting at the hair dryers and I was thinking about 
this band at the time that was called Emery. And I listened to the band occasionally, but they weren't by any means like my favorite band. But I remember thinking, wow, that band has such a pretty name. Like that would make such a girl, a pretty girl's name. And I remember thinking that like, oh, I really like the name Emery. I just remember exactly where I was sitting when I had this thought. And um, who would have thought that I would actually have named my daughter Emery. And so that's where that name came from. So random, but I remember the whole thought process behind that name. Um, and then Elizabeth is my cousin, or was my cousin. Um, she passed away at 12 years old from childhood leukemia. And she was like a couple years younger than me, maybe like three years younger than me at the time, but we were pretty close when I was young. She was actually the cousin that I watched Labyrinth with. And Labyrinth was like our special movie together. And she was that cousin actually. And she was also the cousin that I had the Lisa Frank Club with. Do you guys remember me talking about that in an old vlog? Um, but she, yeah, she passed away when she was about 12. I was about 15 at the time from leukemia. And so I wanted to use her name. So it's Emery Elizabeth. I kind of like this look so far. You know what? I'm going to zoom you in. Why am I not zoomed in? I'm such a rookie. What am I doing? I feel like I'm, sometimes when I do Q&A videos, I feel like I'm talking so much. Like I get tired of my own voice. Do you guys ever feel like that? If you guys make YouTube videos, that you get tired of listening to yourself talk. Like that is how I feel right now. So privacy is right here. This dark shade. I'm going to put that in the outer corners. Would I ever come out with my own line? I don't know. I don't know the first thing about coming out with my own makeup line, to be honest with you. Like, I would have to do some research on that. Um, so I don't know. I think it would be really fun, but I don't know. I do not know. Like, with being a mom of two kids and all of that, I don't know how much work would be involved, but I love this brush, you guys. This is one of my favorite brushes of all time. This is the Sigma Performance Brush, the E30, is it 86 or 36? 36 and it is basically like a small like crease brush it's like really tiny so it fits in this corner like perfectly oh i love it it's my favorite brush ever it's so nice so i'm actually going to bring this up into my crease to darken up this crease usually i don't bring colors into my crease because i have really deep set eyes like right here in my eyes it's super deep set so I don't like to bring dark colors into there because it just makes my eyes look even more close together than they already are and more deep set. So I usually don't bring it too far over, but I'm gonna bring it a little bit over just for a change up. I love your book videos, maybe like your top series or books for this year. So my favorite series of the year is A Court of Thorns and Roses. If you haven't read it yet, do it. I talked about that in my last, well, it was in my last book video, but the book video before, I think, I was talking about A Court of Mist and Fury. I'm obsessed with that book, obsessed. I actually wanna read it again. I wanna reread it really, really soon. I think I'm gonna wait until next year, but I wanna reread it because I loved it so much. And that is definitely my favorite series of the year. Um, I just love it so much. Um, I'm trying to think of what my favorite books of the year have been. Some, 40 Tales of the Afterlives. That was one of my favorites. What else? Illuminae was one of my favorites of the year. Um, I read the Shatter Me series recently, which is a, kind of like an X-Men retelling for young adults. And it's a four book series. And that was actually highly entertaining. Was it like the best written book of all time? No. Um, and it's definitely kind of young, like young adultish, but it was entertaining. So if you want a book series that's gonna like, you're gonna fly through and it's really, really easy to read, read Shatter Me. It has a really good like forbidden romance in it. Um, if you guys like X-Men like I do, it's a total X-Men knockoff. Um, and it was just really good. It was highly entertaining. I read it in like two months, I swear. It was like, and I don't read series in like two months normally. Like I just don't have the time, but I flew through those books. Um, I just thought they were entertaining. So now I'm gonna go in to this color, Turn On. And the reason I'm gonna go into this color is because it is like cool toned and because I'm already very warm toned I kind of want to balance that out with a cool toned color so I'm just gonna put it on my finger and apply it to the center of my lids so pretty I love doing like the shimmery color right in the middle of my lids it's just so pretty I'm not a huge fan of like the cut crease look I think it looks too especially for every day I mean maybe for like a special occasion it's not bad but I feel like the cut crease look at least for me personally, I mean, everybody's different, you know what I mean? 
but I feel like it looks too deliberate. You know what I mean? Like it took so much time to like create this perfect cut crease with like the sparkles. Like it's just not my preference, I guess. I kind of like it when like that middle shine color is just like nice and blended and just kind of like blends out. It's just my personal preference. But like I said, everybody's different. And then I'm gonna do this now just cause it's on my mind. This is a glitter liner from Urban Decay and it's just like a gold one. I really like glitter in gold, but I've been taking just a little bit and I put it right here. Like right in the middle of my lower lash line. And I just kind of like dab it out so it's not too like noticeable, but just like that tiny little sparkle right there in the middle. I think it's so pretty, especially for like, if you're going out, you know, to like a holiday party and you want a little bit of glitter, but not too much. I think it's so pretty. And you can also do it in like the middle, the inner corners, which I do sometimes as well. But right in the middle, I feel like it's kind of different. You guys see that? I need some eyeliner bad. <laughs> Black eyeliner in Feline, which is like the best eyeliner of all time. Literally the best eyeliner of all time. I'm just gonna put that on my lower lashes. My lips are so dry. Yeah. I always get like those one commenters. It's like, your lips are really dry. You don't think I don't notice? Like, <laughs> it's as if they think like I don't notice that my lips are dry and I'm like completely oblivious to the fact that my lips are dry. And they just wanna like point it out just to like be annoying. <laughs> so I'm just gonna blend out that eyeliner onto my lower lash line, which is something I always do. Which is why I should have done the sparkles last, but because it was on my mind, I just did it when I did it, whatever. What direction do you see yourself going in the future with YouTube? Good freaking question. I'm at this point, I think with YouTube where I'm just kind of doing it for fun. It's kind of like this weird thing that happened to me with YouTube where I started YouTube for fun. And that's why I did YouTube for a very long time was for fun. You know, I wasn't really getting paid a lot of money. Um, and then I was able to quit my job at the salon and do YouTube full time as a career and it became my career, which was great. Uh, but I think that sometimes when your passions and hobbies become careers, um, it really throws you off sometimes. And I don't know if anyone else feels this way. If you've had your passion become your career, it kind of messes with your mind a little bit, which is why I've never made art my career because I feel like that would be kind of the same way. It puts pressure on you to do something that you're passionate about and um, it makes your passion feel different than when you just did it as a passion. Does that make sense? It's hard to explain. But um, yeah, I started doing YouTube then as my career, which was great. Don't get me wrong, like amazing. Like I feel so flipping lucky that I was able to do YouTube as my full-time career. Like I literally feel like the luckiest person ever when I think about that because YouTube literally is the most cush job ever. And if anybody on YouTube tells you otherwise, like, oh, it's so hard. Like, yes, there's hard aspects to YouTube for sure. And I'm not gonna discredit that because there's a lot of aspects to YouTube that is difficult, you know? Getting negative comments is difficult. Um, constantly having your creative light bulb on all the time is hard sometimes because you have to you're the one that comes up with all your ideas. You know, you're the one that has to think of everything. You're the one that has to film it and figure out how you're gonna do it. Like your creative juices constantly have to be flowing. Um, sometimes you go through dry spells. You know, there's hard parts about YouTube and that's not a lie. But YouTube is not a bad job. And I will never sit here and pretend that YouTube is just so hard because it's not. I literally make my own hours. I can go on vacation anytime I want. I can talk about whatever I want on YouTube. You know, whatever I feel like talking about, I can talk about and it's amazing. Like YouTube is literally an amazing platform for a lot of reasons. And anybody that gets to do YouTube as a career is very, very lucky. Um, and I really enjoyed doing it as a career for a very long time. But then lots of things changed on YouTube. YouTube is not the same platform as it was when I first started. And um, because of that, algorithms changed, you know, the things that get popular on YouTube and the things that get watched on YouTube changes. And I've always been somebody that kind of remains true to myself. Like I don't change really to get views. So with the algorithm changes, 
and with the changes that come with YouTube, um, I feel like sometimes it doesn't really benefit my channel because let's be honest, um, what gets viewed on YouTube now is very different than what got viewed on YouTube, you know, nine, ten years ago. And I'm not a dramatic person. I don't really feel the need to spill tea every two seconds um, to get views. That's just not the type of person I am. And so I feel like, in a way, you know, the trends of YouTube and the YouTube algorithms just hasn't benefited me the way that it has some, but that's fine. And in that process, I have learned that, and I've kind of grown, to do YouTube for the reasons I used to do YouTube from the beginning, which was as a hobby. And it's made YouTube much more enjoyable for me, whereas before it felt like I was always experiencing all this pressure and like, I was always worried about numbers and views and, but now that I've kind of let all that stuff go, I've started to look at my channel less as like my money-making goal. Like I wanna be a huge YouTuber that has like a million subscribers that, you know, makes all this money. Like that's not my goal anymore. And I've kind of gotten to this place where I don't care and it feels so good to be there. And YouTube isn't my full-blown identity anymore, which I feel like for a while, and I think this happens to a lot of YouTubers actually, is YouTube becomes your identity to a point. And there gets to be a point in your YouTube career where you start identifying with the fact that you are a YouTuber and you start to feel as though YouTube is your identity. And so if anything goes sideways or if your views start going down, you feel like a failure and that like you're losing your identity. And I could go into a whole video on this because it's deep. Um, but I do feel like sometimes YouTubers, okay, I can't talk into my freaking winged eyeliner, so I'm gonna cut this short, but I feel like sometimes YouTubers, um, do kind of go through an identity crisis at a point, and I feel like a lot of YouTubers right now are doing that, are going through this process, um, and I think that there's a lot of burnout going on on YouTube and stuff like that, but I kind of dealt with that a long time ago, in a way, I feel like, and now I'm back at this place where, um, I am okay with where I am, and I feel like there's a point with YouTube where you have to detach yourself from it. And I think this is hard because a lot of YouTubers, I feel like, grow their channels from the ground up. And because of that, YouTube is like your baby. It becomes a part of you. So I'm in a really good place with it. That was a very long tangent. Wow. By the way, you guys, I haven't been using fake lashes lately. Like, I've been using the Rodin and Fields um, lash boosting serum stuff. And I freaking love it because it makes my eyelashes so long. It's kind of like Latisse. It works the same. But it's like, once you curl your eyelashes, your freaking lashes are so long. Like, I don't even have to use fake lashes anymore. And I love it. Because I personally don't really like fake lashes. I don't like how they feel. They're a pain in the butt to put on. I just don't like fake lashes. I wear them sometimes. Like, I'll do outer corner ones. But I just don't like fake lashes. And... It's literally so worth the money to me to buy Lash Serum, like the Lash Boost by Rodin and Fields. So plug to Rodin and Fields. But um, anyways, to answer your question, where do I see myself going on YouTube? To be honest, I'm not sure. Um, I kind of feel like I'm at a point where I want to use my platform for something bigger, but I'm not really too sure what that is yet. <laughs> And that's a really weird place to be. If any of you guys have ever been in a place like this where you know you want something, but you're not exactly sure what that is yet, that is where I am. And that can be kind of a frustrating place to be because you're waiting for that moment for the light bulb to go off or something to click in your head. And it's frustrating when you're kind of in that limbo stage. And I kind of feel like I'm there. Sometimes I feel like I have like book ideas Sometimes I feel like I want to incorporate my art. Sometimes I think that I want to work with like a company to create something bigger. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I'm at this place where I know I want to do something bigger. I just don't know what that is yet. So we will see what that is in the future. I'm having like this craving for a project, like a big project. And I don't know what that project is going to be. And I don't know where that project is going to come from or like what I'm going to be doing or whatever. Like, I don't know where I'm gonna go with that craving, but it's there and I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> it's hard to explain, but that is where I'm at. 
Do you know how, what I would love to do someday? I don't know why this has been on my mind, but I'm like, I would love to work on a movie, like do movie makeup. And I'm like, what is that? Is that me just wanting to do something big or work on something big that I could like put my name on and be like, I worked on that. Like, I think that would give me a lot of like fulfillment, you know? I don't know where that comes from, but yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Like this weird craving to work on something bigger than myself is I guess the best way to put it. So I'm gonna be using this. This is the NYX Striptease Lip uh, Liquid Lipstick. <laughs> and this is I Woke Up Like This. And I talked about this in my recent favorites video. It's a little bit of a darker My Lips Better color, but it's like such a beautiful shade. So I'm gonna show you guys. Yes, I know my lips are dry. Isn't that like the most perfect color? Like what the heck, that's like the perfect color. And I definitely feel like this is cooler toned than the Bedtime Flirt, which is my other favorite. Oh, it's so pretty. That looks so good with the eye look. Like that's like such a perfect lip color. So I'm gonna use the All Nighter Cherry. It's basically just the All Nighter Spray, but cherry scented. <laughs> and that is it guys. I hope you like this look. I know I didn't explain everything perfectly or to a T, but you guys kind of saw what I did. Very beautiful kind of holiday look, holiday. Like you could literally wear this for springtime if you wanted, <laughs> but still it's really pretty. And I love this little glitter, like little dot of glitter. It's so fun. So anyways, I hope you guys like this. I hope you guys like the chit chat. Let me know if you guys wanna see more of these in the future. I'd be happy to do one. I saw a really good question actually that I wish I would've got to, but it was my favorite quotes and to kind of talk about them. And I didn't get to that question, which I'm kind of sad that I didn't because that would be really fun. So remind me to talk about that in my next chit chat, get ready with me, uh, because I love quotes. I'm very picky about the type of quotes that I pin on Pinterest. Like I'm very picky, um, but I didn't get to all the questions. I'm sorry. I tend to just blab forever, but yeah, I hope you guys liked this video. I hope it was kind of entertaining while you did your makeup. Um, and I hope you guys liked this beautiful makeup look. I actually really like how this turned out. And it's very wearable while still being kind of unique. So yeah, I hope you guys liked this video and I will talk to you guys in my next one. Bye.